Hello, hello, hello. We are streaming on YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And today, what we are going over is we are going over career change help. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. What we're going to be doing here is working through what's stopping you from getting the job that you want. And we're going to talk about how to work through your uh, resume, how to work through applying, how to actually get uh, get through into the job that you want, how to break into it. And yeah, so that's what we're talking about tonight. So if you're trying to get from a job that you have into a job that you want and you can't figure out how to do it, holler at your girl. I'm going to help you figure out how to do it. I'm going to help you figure out what skills you need to do. I'm going to help you figure out how to interview, how to negotiate, how to actually strategically search for jobs and how to go about applying for them in a way that makes sense so that you don't procrastinate. So you actually get stuff done. But yeah, that's what we're doing. So if you're trying to get a new job, let me know what that is and I will help. And we're streaming on TikTok, LinkedIn, and YouTube right now. I've never done this before, uh, st streaming to all three. So we're kind of, we're a little new to it. We're getting used to it. We'll see how we go. So if we get some uh, good TikTok questions, we usually get pretty uh, rowdy on TikTok. So do like that. But yeah, anybody who, anybody who has questions, questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, Holler, let me know what job you're trying to get into, what's stopping you from getting it, and how I can help you. And I'm going to put on some lo-fi girl because we're doing work here. That's what we're doing. So hang on. Folks, what we're doing is we're going from the job you have into the job that you want. We're trying to help you figure out how to get the job that you want with the job that you have now. So we're going to talk over the skills you have. Hey, Jeremy, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um trying to help you figure out how to get into your new job. So if you if you have a question for how to do that and drop it here, we're trying to help you get the job that you want. And we're just going to work through it all together and see if we can make it happen. And that's what we're doing. How's it going? So folks, howdy and welcome. What we're doing is we are working, we're career coaching here. So what we're doing is together, we are going to work through whatever is keeping you from getting the job that you want. So if you're trying to learn, if you're not sure what skill to learn, if you're not sure what jobs to look for, if you're not sure how to get into a different industry, drop your questions in the comments. Let me know what you're trying to do so I can help you do it. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing tonight, folks. We are streaming live to YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok. If you want to add me on LinkedIn, holler at your girl, Hannah Mariama. Please feel free to look me up, add me. I accept anybody on LinkedIn. That's what we do. That's what we do. So tonight what we were doing is it's a little cold too. So got my uh, got my winter sweatshirt on. It's been warming up lately down here in Texas where we are, but it is getting a little bit. It's where um, Pucks Honey Field's a little colder. So we're celebrating this uh, backslide into winter by working through into what job you are trying to get. Degree free, no degree, no experience. No prior industry experience. If you are trying to get into a different job that you do not already have and you're not sure how to do it and you're not sure how to get past it. <laughs> Mariama, M-A-R-U-Y-A-M-A. -A -A. You can add Ryan too. So you get me and Ryan. So if you don't have a network, now you have two people. Drone clone, that's a cool, that's a cool name. Let's try plants. I like that too. Parroting. Wow. We have quite a few pretty cool names. All right. So folks, what we're doing right now is if you're trying to get into a different job from the job you have now, different industry, different job, different job title, whatever it is, you're not sure what skills you need. You're not sure how to translate your existing experience into, um, that's super negative, man. I don't know if I agree with that at all, actually. Um, I mean, I kind of, I kind of do in that. I think that, um, we have a comment that says careers don't exist anymore because no matter how hard you work, you won't be a 1%. I don't think that that's a good reason reason to not have a career. I think a career is all of the work that you do combined. Um, and I don't think most of us need to be a 1%. Like, I don't think I need to be a 1% in order to achieve my goals in life. My goals are pretty small. I think that I can, I can be very, very content and very happy without being a one percenter. Um, so I don't know if that's really super helpful, but if you want to be something other than one percenter, like if you just want to be able to buy a house or I don't know, get uh, like foster some dogs or if you want to be able to take your parents to dinner on Sunday, um, then let me know what kind of job you want to get so that you can make more money so that you can do things that you want to do. Um, don't don't mix up. Uh, don't mix up your passion and your job. A lot of people do that. I think you have to be passionate about your job. You don't. You have to be passionate about what your job lets you do. For some people, that is the actual work. Um, 
for basic labor jobs is doable, but healthcare law enforcement and stuff require training. Um, yeah, I never said nothing didn't require, I never said things didn't require training. I've never said that ever in my life. Um, tell me why teachers are working two jobs. Many doctors are struggling to live. Um, doctors are struggling to live because uh, colleges are ripping them off with student loans the way they rip off all of us. Teachers are working two jobs because they paid to get college degrees for jobs that make 36 k a year. That's why they are working two jobs. That's my hot take. Real estate. Um, you're trying to get into real estate, Master Chief One? That's not to be discompassionate towards teachers. I have a lot of friends who are teachers, actually. Um, but they did choose the job, and a lot of them did not look how, how much they were going to get paid afterwards. And now they are all trying to get into different jobs. What do you do for work? I work for a crypto, well, not a crypto startup. I work for a uh, startup that does um, SaaS services on the blockchain, and we use AI to do that. It's a startup that does... Um, we analyze contracts for large enterprise level companies. Yep, Ruby, I never said that they're not good for the country. I said that. I never said they're not good for the country. I said that they paid too much for a degree that doesn't make them enough money. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Uh, what is a high demand tech job right now? Data analytics. Ruby, just because people go to school doesn't mean they're educated. That's a huge problem, and that's the reason why so many of us bought college degrees and we didn't learn anything. So not a viably stable job. I mean, I've been in it for two years, and we just got, we just got acquired, so I think we're doing pretty solid because there's lots of people in viably stable jobs that have lost their jobs over the past, um, I don't know, two months. Um, I don't think anything's a viably stable job. I think that you need skills so that you can get any job you want. I'm not worried about getting laid off because I can always get another job. That's job security is skill security. I've been a line cook. Ruby, I've written two books. <laughs> how many have you written? Uh, I think I'm doing just fine. I've been a line cook for years, but I have no idea how to transfer to more of remote work. Okay. If you've Let's try plants. You've been a line. Yeah. By educated Ruby, I mean somebody, if you can't define educated, I, that sounds like a, that sounds like a problem with your education. I've been a line cook for more for years, but I have no idea how to transfer to more of remote work. Okay. So let's try plants. Do you have any, like, uh, do you have any interests or any ideas about job titles that you might want to transition into? Uh, anybody that's work service industry, actually, I highly recommend go check out the degree free podcast. We did, uh, we actually did an entire episode about jobs that are really good for folks who've worked in the service industry to transition into. I was in the service industry for years. I was a bartender. I worked back of house. Um, I did, I did, I didn't do prep, but I did, I did service. So I did back of house. Um, I was a host. I was a waitress. I've done the whole, the whole shebang. So for you, I mean, knowing that one, you're great. So if you've been a line cook, you're good working in a team, you're good working under pressure. Okay. You have a lot of transferable skills, usually pretty okay with the communication too, right? Cause in the back, in the, in the kitchen, especially the communication is really fast paced. It's very high pressure. Like you have to get things right. You have to be able to iterate really quickly. Um, so for you, I mean, line cook to, hmm. You could do you could do cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is pretty solid, um, especially if you're good under pressure. Because usually cybersecurity is pretty chill until something actually goes wrong. Ruby Minoka, oh, you're one of those. Yes, I'm an educated person. Um, the key is to get skills that you can carry with you to multiple job types and multiple industries. It's okay, Ruby, if you are uncomfortable by people being educated without buying degrees. It's a it's a very papered mindset, and that's actually the entire reason that I do these live streams. It's to educate people. So hopefully this can help you and you can learn something. There's probably a lot of people in, in here that follow us that are in our comments that are educated people. I highly suggest you check out the Degree Free Podcast. But yeah, folks, so what we are doing today is we are working through skills that you need or things that you need in order to get into a different job. So holler at your girl. Tell me what job you're trying to get. Tell me how you're trying to get there. Is your resume stopping you? Are you not able to find the right job titles? Are you not sure where to look for your jobs? Are you not sure why you're not getting callbacks? Tell me what's stopping you from getting the actual job that you want. Companies are down credentialing because they are wrong. Yes, they are, Jeremy. I actually just saw to, um, I don't know if you folks are, uh, our episode comes out Wednesday morning, uh, but we just did an episode about another state that has down credentialed their jobs and they removed the college degree requirement for jobs it is no longer necessary for. And they 
removed it for a whopping 92% of the jobs. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Georgia is now considering Georgia is about to be the fifth state that is considering down credentialing and it's going to happen very, very quickly. Um, the company, the states are going to go down like dominoes. And once all the states do it, all of the uh, the companies are going to follow suit as well. I actually just talked to the head of a nonprofit in D.C. who is working on a large campaign for down credentialing. And he said the same thing. He said that they are working closely with states, counties. Um, and as they do that, they're noticing that companies are more and more interested all the time in the formal process to down credential their job listings. The only thing stopping companies right now is the fact that they don't really know how to restructure their hiring policies. Um, I want a job in tech. Help. I have no degree or experience. Would love to work in big tech. Uh, user 7258, what kind of job do you, are you willing to learn? What kind of skill are you willing to learn? Uh, if you're willing to learn a skill, data analytics or software engineering. Um, right now, the things that you could teach yourself for little to low cost are going to be SQL. You can teach yourself Python. Um, let's try plants. What would you need to go into cybersecurity? I know the CompTIA Plus. CompTIA Plus certification is the perfect place to start. Um, so um, let's try plants. You're going from line cook to cybersecurity. So that would be something that um, you would definitely start with CompTIA Plus. That is where you're going to want to start with any cybersecurity things because it's just the basics. It's very basic um, and you only get it from CompTIA Plus. Don't go get it on some nonsense site. Only get it from them. The reason is because you want to get certifications from the actual licensing body. You don't want to get it from some other thing. Um, data analytics will be overtaken by AI. Ray Coleman, that's a good uh, question. Will data analytics be overtaken by AI? I think a lot of the heavy lifting for like manual work on spreadsheets probably will. Uh, but what I will say about that is that um, the questions upstream from data analytics, so um, more of the actual business, the business decisions and the more strategic things, I think are probably going to be even more um, important. It's going to be even more important that there are humans doing that. And so it'll probably just turn into slightly different. Um, young chopstick, I fit to quit my job, bruh. Do it. But don't do it until you have a skill or multiple applications already in or preferably another job. Ryan and I talk about that all the time, but do not quit your job until you have another job. It's easier to find a job when your back is not against the wall. Um, and what I mean by that is you don't want to like need money and be applying for jobs because that's really freaking stressful. Um, software engineering. Okay. Um, if yeah, if you're willing to study software engineering, then I would go on Udemy and I would look up um, it depends on if you want to be front end or back end. There's actually a really good creator on here called Front End Simplified. I would highly recommend looking him up. He has a paid course. Um, I believe it's monthly and he has good discord and I would highly recommend checking out his content. He does a great job. Um, and I've seen some really good, I've seen some really good things about that too. Do you know resources to learn the plumbing trade? How's... How's how's it going? Um, yeah. All right. So if you want to be a plumber, what you're going to want to look up is you're going to want to lo uh, look up apprentices or on the job training. So if you want to learn a trade right now, you should not be paying for that. Do not go to trade school. Trade school has almost the exact same ROI as college. It's not good. What you want is you want to find somebody who's willing to either train you or apprentice you. The reason is because you want to get paid while you're learning or you want somebody to be invested. So apprentices, they're invested in you. Um, and on the job training, at least they're forking out money to train you while you learn. That's what you want. It, redu it reduces the risk that you outlay by putting your time into learning something. How to be a software engineer. Um, user 725, you have to decide if you want to be front end or back end. And then from there, you need to learn a specific, you need to learn at least one language first. Um, and then from there, you need to build, build stuff, build shit for lack of a better term. Managers still want custom reports. Data analysts will be needed for a while. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's probably to, um, it's probably, um, yeah, what Jeremy was saying, uh, data analysts will be still needed for a while. So this, this happened a while ago, but when they invented the ATM, and I think I've told this story, but when they invented the ATM, they thought that it was going to put all bank tellers out of business. They thought that no bank, no one was going to need bank tellers anymore, but what actually happened was you needed even more bank tellers than before. Uh, and so usually when people are worried about that, like I saw a clip the other day of somebody talking about, um, about trucks and about the fact that they're eventually we're going to be automated trucks. And so we need to worry about people losing their jobs because of trucks, um, because of automated trucks. And I think that that's very silly because um, things don't happen overnight. They take a long time. And usually what happens is you actually need more people instead of less people at first to make things work.
um, user 725, absolutely. Just look into front end or back end and then decide if um, like front end is going to be the way things look and back end is going to be the way things work. Um, so you want to look at uh, whether or not you want to do the, the things people see or the things that actually make the things that people see work. So those are the two. And then from there, and it could be any, you can use any factor to decide that. Maybe you want money. And so you look at whichever one pays more. Maybe you want to work with the way things look. And so you pick front end because you want to work on the, on the way things look. Um, and then, yeah, from there, you're going to learn whichever language is most, is most often used right now for building front end or building back end, depending on what you want to do. Every different, every, every family of software engineering. So there's lots of different families of software engineering. So depending on what industry you are trying to get into, they're going to use a different, they're probably going to use a different language. Um, and then it, it does seem to me that over time too, the preferred languages change a little bit sometimes. And so you just want to see which one's in demand now and you want to see what it's in demand for, right? So if you want to work with like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. If you want to work with cybersecurity or let's say you want to work with blockchain technology, you want to work with solidity, right? Um, you want to learn solidity. You don't maybe want to learn, um, some other obscure language. You don't want to learn like Ruby on the rails, which is an older, which is an older language. Um, and keep in mind, I'm not, I'm not a software developer. Um, I work with them, but I'm not one. So, um, yeah, of course, absolutely. And thank you so much for the gifts. What's your position on the CHIPS Act and its technology job creation potential? What's the CHIPS Act? I think it should be illegal to name bills because I think it's marketing and I think it's almost always a lie. <laughs> so any time that there's a name for a bill or uh, an act of the government, I tend to think that it's a sham. Um, Python programming is a good place to start. Free to download and learn, not as discouraging. Yes, I agree with that. Um, Free Code Camp is a great resource too uh, for people looking to learn how to program or develop software. But anyway, folks, anybody that's joining, what we're doing is we're working through how to get you the job that you want. So if you do not know what skill you need, if you've been applying to jobs and no one is reaching back out to you, if you can't figure out what's wrong with your resume, if you don't know um, Juliet has gun. Um, okay. If you don't know, if you don't know what skill you should learn, if you don't know how to take your existing experience and go into a different job and translate it, let me know. I can help with that. Chips Act, free potato chips for all. <laughs> that sounds about right. That sounds like something that, that sounds like something Congress would do. The Chips Act, everybody get free chips, <laughs> vote for us all. Um, but yeah, so um, if you are, if you're thinking about getting, going from one job into another job and you do not know, um, thanks my dude. I'm not that hot though. I just have a sweatshirt on. We're chilling. We're chilling here. It's actually pretty cold in the studio. So I'm a normal temperature. Um, thanks. Okay. If you need help going from one job to another job, let me know what you need and I will help you get through it. If you want to be part of our four-week career change crash course, we have a few more spots left. It starts on April 4th. April 4th, people. That is very soon. Thanks, Jeremy. That's Jeremy Mitch, our mod in the comments. Big hand for Jeremy. He's always here for us. Uh, Brian, what's up? What's up? What's up? Brian is our resident uh, Chinese-speaking job transitioner. How's it going? How's the job hunt going? We have some regulars on the live stream. I'm the type of person that just needs a pathway. Um, co cow, how are you doing? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, how are you doing? I'm so glad that you need a pathway. There are five. Here are the five degree free pathways. I got you. Ryan and I got you. We already thought this out. We're actually making a free course for this right now. It's going to be in our community when we launch it and you will be able to just sign up and you can just jump in there and take the course. So five degree free pathways. The first one is get a job. <laughs> that one sounds really simple, but really it's just get any sort of job and maybe try to find one that's actually in the, um, that's actually in the niche that you're trying to get into. Um, the second one is uh, find on the job training or apprenticeship. And the reason we say the second is because you want to get somebody else to take on the financial risk of your learning. Like you don't want to be paying to learn. You want to be getting paid to learn. That's always a good thing to do. It doesn't matter if you never use the skill again, at least you didn't lose money while you were learning it. Right. Um, the third one is earn a license or certification. Okay. So get a job 
uh, find uh, apprenticeship or on-the-job training, earn a license or certification. This can literally be anything. This could be um, uh, an insurance adjuster's license. This could be a notary license. This could be a pilot's license. This could be a Salesforce certification. It doesn't matter. The fourth one is build a business. That one's controversial because some people may think, oh my gosh, that's so overwhelming. But a business is anything that you do that somebody pays you for. So if you want to go wash the windows or take in the trash cans of the people in the neighborhood that you live in, that's a business. If you get enough people to buy, that's a business. Cutting grass is a business. People make massive businesses out of that. Number five is learn a skill. So that would be like learn photography, learn to video edit, teach yourself how to do something that's free or low cost, and then start leveraging that skill. Um, a great example is like Mr. Beast has a job board. I don't know if you guys knew that, but like Mr. Beast is one of the biggest, is the biggest <laughs> YouTube creator in the world. And Mr. Beast has a job board and all the job boards all the jobs on the job board want people who have skills. Um, and those skills are like editing in Adobe, you know, in Adobe Premiere. You can teach yourself how to do that. Um, it's going to take some work because it's not an easy thing to learn, but you can teach it to yourself, which is practice. Um, so yeah, big fan of that. But so those are the degree free I'm going to go over that again. Degree free path. There are five degree free pathways. This is something that Ryan and I spent a lot of time and this envelops every single person who is trying to get work, get a job, literally any job or uh, find on apprenticeship or on the job training. Number three is earn a license or certification of any kind. The reason is because if you have it, that means that there are people that don't and it just puts you a cut above, right? It's a tool in your arsenal. Number four is build a business. Sorry, I can't open my hand that big. Um, <laughs> number five is going to be learn a skill. Um, that's going to be any skill that you can use to build shit and show people that you have a skill that other people don't have. So how are you doing? I really hope that that helped you. So whichever one of those pathways you want to go down, holler, let me know. What if we don't have the money? How can you help us? Um, please, as Jeremy said, listen to the Degree Fruit Podcast. If you don't have any money, that's an excellent place to start. If you do have money and you wanted to pay Ryan and I to help you, we do have a few spots left in our four-week career change crash course. It starts on April 4th. Anybody going from any job to any other job that wants help on how to do that strategically with looking, applying, resume writing, cover letter writing, cold outreach, network building, content creation, literally everything is going to be in that course. It's massive. It's, it's a huge course. Course, and we are going to be working with people individually going through it. Um, I've already been doing research for the people that are signed up. It's going to be extremely cool. And it's also awesome because the people in the course are all trying to do different things, but they're all trying to do them the same way, which is the degree free way. So we're pretty freaking stoked about that. And I'm excited to work with them. The content is super helpful. Good work, guys. Dylan draws. Thank you, Dylan. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's not illegal to apply to a job you want. Yes. Hell yeah, Kflow 841 Let's see. What's the best skill to learn now? Ray Coleman, I think data analytics or anything having to do with AI. Um, you know what's so funny? I actually just, um, something I just started doing that I think you guys are going to like kind of a lot is um, I asked ChatGPT for um, to design a curriculum using free resources online. And then I checked it over the ones that I've used. So I had ChatGPT to design a 10 week curriculum, um, for, uh, learning AI and machine learning. And I think if it can do that, it can pretty much do anything else. So I think I'm just going to start going through asking it to give me a rough draft curriculum of those things. And then I'm going to go through fine tune and check, and then I'm just going to put those up, um, on site and you guys can look at them and hopefully that helps you. Um, cause that's a zero, that's zero dollars, like zero cost resource. You can just look and see the list and then click through and learn. You probably still gonna need, you might still need help applying and stuff like that, but that's where the podcast comes in. We're almost on episode 100. Do you think entertainment is a good field to enter, to get into? Um, Brian, that's a really good question. I don't know if I'd say entertainment is a good field to get into, but you can get into it probably easier than others. A lot of people think that it's um, all locked up, but the thing about entertainment is it really is, um, you know, entertainment is very much like network. It's they're very much network based. So if you're in the room, if you're around, and if you know people who know people, that's how you're gonna get. That's how you're gonna get work. Um, so if you want to get into entertainment, like radio, TV, anything like uh, like ad advertising, anything like that, you need to go work at a place that does that. If you want to work at a radio station, go get a job doing literally anything at the radio station. If they won't hire you, then volunteer to do something there to get in the room because eventually opportunities are going to come up and guess who's going to get them? You, because you're literally there and somebody else is not. Do not overestimate how important it is to be in the room. 
what do you think about the hospitality industry um as a whole like as a good it, i worked hospitality for years um years and years like seven years i worked service industry um so um that's kind of that like that's where i cut my teeth working um i worked i've worked service industry for a long time bartending waitressing front of house host um you know did did all that stuff did all that stuff i was a food runner um done pretty much all of it at all different kinds of restaurants too. worked at dive bars. I worked at fancy, I worked at fancy restaurants, the kind of restaurants I'd never be able to afford to eat at <laughs> the kind of restaurants where I still feel uncomfortable because I don't know which fork to use. <laughs> I wasn't raised like that guys is virtual assistant. Um, AI, uh, I'm Brian. I'm not sure. I understand your question is virtual assistant. Um, now an AI, no, you can, um, you can be a virtual assistant. Uh, without AI. I think Salesforce is good as well. I would agree. Salesforce is good as well. I, um, ChatGPT, send my resume to a hundred companies today. Didn't work. Not there yet. Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> nice, Jeremy. Um, uh, Dan, uh, Dan Fat Cat. Uh, yes, yeah, Salesforce is good as well. That's how I, that's how I got my start in tech. Uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Are you guys having any more boot camps after? Interested, but paying in April is out of the question. How are you doing? I'm not sure if we're gonna do another one yet. Um, I think right now we're just taking it one at a time. We're just gonna work with the with the with the 20 people that we have, um, and we're gonna see how it goes, and we're gonna see if we want to do it after. The reason is because the way it's shaping up is it's gonna be quite a lot of work. Um, because we're just going to do a lot for each person. And so we're not sure if we're going to stick with that. Um, we're not sure if we're going to stick with that hands-on approach or if it's maybe more accessible to people to change it up. So this group of people might be the only ones that ever get this like very hands-on, you know, very much we're, we're doing a lot of research for them. We're, we're doing a lot of the work for them with them, like right alongside them. The other ones may be a little more self-led. And then we do, you know, maybe we do events. Ryan and I are kind of talking it through right now. We're not sure how we're going to structure it or if it's going to be the same one. Um, yeah, I totally, I totally get that. Um, if you want to just shoot us an email and say you want to be put on the wait list, if we, um, it's, uh, go to degreefree.co, uh, forward slash sign up. I'm sorry, degreefree.co forward slash newsletter and just sign up and um, you'll get an email that says, hey, did you get this? And then when you get it, just respond and say uh, wait list future, um, future boot camp and uh, we'll put you on the wait list. We need to make a better system for that. But <laughs> one thing at a time right now, we're all focused on the We're all focused on the crash course. What resources can we use to write better resumes? Um, actually, my how are you doing? Thanks, my guy. Um, what resources can we use to write better resumes? I actually like ChatGPT for this. I don't know if um, if anyone on here has used it yet, but I actually think it's pretty good. Just make sure, sorry, um, just make sure when you are writing your resume that it is very simple. Make sure that it is one column. Make sure it is 10 to 12 point Arial or Times New Roman font. Do not use any of the weird um, uh, two days a week, our crash course is going to meet folks. Um, we're going to do Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 PM central time. And we are all going to get together and we're going to work through anything that is stopping you or sticking you up. And we're going to figure out what's wrong, what's working, what's not. And we're going to help you get your job that way. Um, so that is part of it, but also we will be continuously monitoring the community. And so when people have questions, they're going to drop them in the community. So Ryan and I will be looking at that all day. Um, so what resources can we use to write better resumes? So yeah, so 10, 10 to 12 point times new Roman or Arial font, make sure it's single column, make sure, um, you do not use months when you are putting your work, your work dates, just use years. Cause it's just easier and less questions. Um, uh, make sure you're writing in bullet point format, which is with numbers and results for each bullet point. That's really important. They just lazy. I don't know who you're talking about. So I don't know if I agree or disagree with you. Some people are lazy, but I don't know. I think a lot of people work pretty hard too. So um, yeah. So if you're just joining us, folks, what we're doing right now is we are trying to coach through and take you from the job you have to the job that you want. 
So if you've been applying for jobs or trying to change jobs and you are tired of not hearing anything back, let's work through what is stopping you. Maybe you're missing a skill. Maybe you're not applying correctly. Maybe you're not looking at the right jobs. Maybe you um, maybe you didn't fine tune the jobs you're looking for enough. Maybe you fine tune them too much and you eliminated yourself out of too many. Um, so just holler, tell us what you're looking for, what you're trying to do. And then we will figure out what's going wrong and what is going right. What kind of jobs are you helping people get? M. Kova, good question. Uh, we're helping people get any kind of jobs. Um, there was somebody at the other day that was in here looking for a glass blowing job. So this could be glass blowing, data analysis, software engineering. I work in I work in product and operations. So this could be people that want to work in ops. This could be people that want to work in customer service. This could be people that want to work remotely. This could be people that want to work in a job. Basically, what we're doing is trying to help people get the work they want. So the thing is, the beautiful thing about work and the beautiful thing about life is that everybody wants something different for a different reason. I just had someone message me on LinkedIn and she just said that she wants a calm job at an office as a receptionist. That's what she wants in life. There's no right, there's no wrong. Everybody is looking for something else. And the problem is that a lot of us have not been taught how to get what we want for the reasons that we want it. And so that's a big thing that we're helping people figure out is figure out what do they want and then how, like what work makes sense for them in order to have the type of life that they want. And then from there, what skills do they need in order to get the type of job that they want so that they can live the type of life that they want. And when I say the type of life, I mean, sometimes it's money, but sometimes it's time and sometimes it's work environment. Like everybody wants something different for different reasons. Um, is this about data analysis? Um, yes and no, Ruth 2020. Um, it can be about data analysis if that's what you are trying to get into. What certificates does a beginner need to get these jobs? Um, so data analysis is not one that you, I would say, is certificate heavy necessarily. That one is going to be project heavy. So what you want to be able to do is actually prove that you can do work. Hey, Preeti, what's up? Preeti's in our crash course. Preeti is in our crash course. She is going to be making a job transition very, very soon. Excited to help her and work with her. Um, what certificates does a beginner need to get those jobs? Um, so yeah, so the, you don't necessarily need a certification for data analysis. What you need to be able to do is show that you did work. And um, in order to show that you did work, you do have to know what you're doing. And then you need to use OBS, which is a free open source recording software to talk through what you are doing and how you understand it and what you are accomplishing, what you are changing, what problem you're solving. You're going to save that down to your desktop. When you save that down to your desktop, you are going to upload that. You're going to send it when you apply for jobs. If there's not a place for you to upload it, you're going to send, you're going to find the email of the person who you're applying for. Um, so the hiring manager, where, wherever it is, and you're going to send it. If you, there, if you can't find that email address, you're going to go to the website and you're going to send it to them and you're going to ask them to forward it to the hiring manager. There are ways. But yeah. Um, if, if the industry you're trying to get into does not value certificates highly, then it is wise for you to have a portfolio of work. Even if you do want to get into a, uh, a field that values certificates. You still want to have a portfolio of work, if at all possible. The reason is because then you can show them the work. You don't want to make it harder for someone who's trying to hire you to understand why they want to give you the job. Your job when you are applying for jobs is to make it easy for the hiring manager to understand why they want to hire you. Where do we find it? Coco Bun Misfit. Uh, find what? It. The meaning of life? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I saw a movie once about that. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I have mixed feelings on that movie. I feel like it was really big when I was younger, but now not so much. And people don't think it's nearly as funny as I do. Um, Ruth 2020. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I hope that helps you. Yeah. When the golden rule is to, is to when, when you are applying, your resume needs to be very clear. You need to be very, very, very clear about what you've done in jobs that makes sense to apply for, to the, the, that, that they explain why you're applying for the job you're applying for. Um, the thing you were suggesting for us to send to hiring managers. I know admin said it's, oh, um, yes. Um, Coco Bun, you are going to send a portfolio of work to hiring managers. So a portfolio of work is documentation. So like anything that you've created that has to do with your job, with your job or with the type of job you're trying to get. So um, let's say you're trying to get a graphic design job and you made some stuff on Canva. You're going to save that down and you are going to submit that to the, yeah, 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 of course. Um, you're going to submit that to the hiring manager, either in the application or you're going to find them. You're going to hunt them down somehow <laughs> and get it to them. Um, it's really important, especially now because a, sending a portfolio can really differentiate you now because people don't send them. 
people don't send them. Anytime that you do something that other people don't do, it really differentiates you from the pack. Um, another, th another tip, um, and I'm going to say this, I'm streaming on LinkedIn right now, but <laughs> another tip that I would have is don't, uh, do not look for jobs on LinkedIn. That's a terrible place to look for jobs. Um, it, LinkedIn admittedly itself is not a job board. Um, and that is something that I think people really misunderstand about LinkedIn. It's not. And, and also because people mistake that so often, there is so much competition on LinkedIn. And so it's not really a good, it's not really a good place to look. You need to look where there's less people. You need to look where there's less competition. You need to get off of LinkedIn and onto the company websites to apply directly. My universe stat is leaking across the internet. That seems unfortunate. Is OneDrive a Google OneDrive or a Google Drive link good for a public portfolio? Will a screen link out to resumes? Um, I think a Google Drive link is solid. Um, another thing you can really you can do is um, make sure that I recommend doing is make sure you are saving down everything in a format that is easy to open. So if you have a PowerPoint that you're submitting in your portfolio, don't save it down as a PowerPoint file, save it down as a PDF. Um, if you're submitting documents, like a, if you're submitting a document or um, a piece of artwork that you did, don't submit it in some strange format that they're not going to be able to open. Like uh, don't submit something that's in a native iPhone uh, format, like the HEIC, I forget what the acronym stands for, but basically the Somebody, somebody tell me what that stands for. I know one of y'all, one of y'all know off the top of your head. Um, Ryan told me once what it was for, but I, I forgot what the acronym means, but don't save it. Don't save it down as that. Don't send that to somebody because you don't know if they can open it. And there's nothing as frustrating as like, you're trying to look at this person's portfolio and you want to hire them, right? Like you want to hire somebody and you're looking, you're trying to, someone's trying to make it easier for you to understand whether or not you should hire them. And then you try to open their documents and you can't open them. And you're like, Ugh, okay right? Done. On to the next because people are like that. And it's okay that people are like that. Maybe people should work harder. People should be more thorough. But the thing is, we're all working. We're all tired. And especially the HR and the hiring managers right now, and especially the recruiters too, honestly. Um, I know a lot of us have been ghosted. I myself, right? Like everybody, everybody's had an experience where they've got a recruiter reached out to them and they go take an interview or something and they don't, you know, and they don't, they don't call you back or they set up, they set up a meeting and then they don't show up. Um, and I tend to think like, you just tend to assume that people aren't doing things out of malice, right? Usually they're doing it because they're just overwhelmed. Um, they're overwhelmed. There's so much churn. There's so much trying to reach people. They're, Hey, you need to hire these people. Hey, you need to cut these people. And it's just a lot. Um, and everybody's having a hard time. So if you can just be, just put yourself in their shoes and go, Hmm, okay, how can I make this easy for them? And when you do that, it kind of shifts the way you apply for jobs too. Even though applying for for jobs is such a chore and we shouldn't have to do it the way we have to do it. But the reality is this is the way the system is designed right now. The only way to work around the system is to volume apply, to brute force your way in by, you know, sending actual work to say, hey, I've done this. Um, you know, something we're working on right now is a portfolio, a personal portfolio project so that people can actually put up portfolio in an easy way. And so there's not this issue of being able to open things and having them organized all in a different way. So it's difficult to understand whether or not something's applicable to the job. Practice, practice interview questions and answers in the mirror. It helps a lot. I couldn't agree with that more, Jeremy. That's great advice. Um, also, you, something you can do is you can record yourself, uh, record yourself on your phone and watch it back and see if you make sense. Uh, <laughs> you'd be surprised sometimes after, uh, after Ryan and I, and I already, everybody does this too. But I have a terrible verbal crutch. I say uh, all the time. And so when I watch myself back and if you think about it, yeah, um, uh, um, uh, if you think about it, you know, I, but I, I'm a podcaster. I, I spend thousands of hours, hundreds of thousands of hours talking. Uh, and I, I create TikTok content all the time and I still do it. And so it, even for me, if I have a job interview, I'm going to record myself answering questions so that I know that it's not the first time, whatever this thought is, is coming out of my mouth. Even and, and the goal of it is not to like sound rehearsed. The goal of it is just so it's the, the first time you're answering a question, it's not it's not to the person who you need the answer to be really good so that they'll give you a job, right? It just takes all the pressure off if before you've asked yourself the questions that you think that they might ask you, even if they don't hit all of them, but at least you've got some practice under your belt. And so you're not as scared. <laughs> um, I find that that helps kind of a lot. So, um, hi, I think we have, uh, four. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. 
there are people asking me questions. Andrew, I'm so sorry. Andrew Shub Shubham and Willie, I am so sorry. I um this is the first time doing both of these like this, and so I totally miss these questions. Uh, don't know what kind of job I want. I just know it's not the one I currently have. Andrew, what kind of you don't know what kind of job you want? Um, do you know what kind of pay you'd like to make, or what type of work environment you'd like to make? Um, and then I have done my Salesforce admin certification but no experience, what should I do? Um, uh, Sh Shubman, you should go and look for a company that hires, uh, that does contracting. So that does Salesforce contracting. The reason is because if they have a job open, it's probably because they have a contract that they have already agreed to and they need somebody with a certificate, but they need somebody with a Salesforce admin to actually um, hire. And so that would be a really wise thing to do. So look for those type of companies. Look for companies that work with companies who are who are creating or developing Salesforce instances for large businesses. That would be my advice to you. What are the best certificates to land for IT to land a job? CompTIA Plus. So any cy cybersecurity right now. Um, I believe also the top in-demand one was the, uh, shoot, I have to look it up. It's Microsoft Engineering. Cloud computing, Microsoft cloud computing. That is going to be that is going to be your one. Microsoft cloud engineer, cloud engineer. Um, let's try plants. Where can you go for resume help? Um, there's a really useful. Um, there is a very oh tech jobs. Wow. There is where can I go for resume help? There is a very useful application called Resi, R E Z Z Y. I would highly recommend doing that. Um, if you are interested in taking our crash course, we are actually going to do resumes with everybody in there. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing them all, making sure that they are good to go. Yeah, there we go. Microsoft Cloud Engineer. That's a good one. Willie, I hope that that was helpful. Let's see. Are Salesforce certificates in demand? Um, Cocoa Bun Misfit. Uh, yes, Salesforce. Right now, CRMs is the number, is that according to LinkedIn, they released a list of the top 10 skills that people are getting hired for right now. And number 10 is uh, any kind of CRM. And so Salesforce is obviously top of the heap. Salesforce is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Salesforce is the king of the CRMs. So, yeah. Salesforce certificates are in demand. More so Salesforce skills. So even if you don't have a Salesforce certification, but you've worked with it a lot to the point where you were a power user, or you could just quantify your experience by taking the exam. We had somebody on here a while ago. Of course, Willie. Um, we had we had somebody on here a while ago that was um, very clearly somebody who would use Salesforce a ton. And um, my advice to them was actually to, instead of even studying for it, just to, they'd use Salesforce for like five years and was very comfortable generating reports and working in the back end. And I just said, hey, maybe go take the practice exam on Salesforce and then just go take the exam. Because if you pass the practice, you could probably pass the actual exam. So if you've been working with it for a while and you're comfortable with it, I think it's 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, which I realize is not a small chunk of change. Um, but you can just take the exam and then you don't have to pay for a course because if you if you are comfortable with it enough already, you might be able to pass it. It's not that difficult if you're familiar with Salesforce. And you, you might just need to study a little bit in order to pass it. But yeah, anybody who's having questions, what we are doing right now is we are going from the job that you have into the job that you want. And so feel free to drop any questions. Of course, Coco Bun Misfit. Um, we are live streaming on TikTok, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. And what we are doing is we are going through, um, we are going through and answering questions about how to get into the job that you want. If you, um, if you're trying to make a job transition and you're not sure how to do it, you're not getting calls back. Um, and you are discouraged drop in the comments. What is, um, what is making it difficult for you to change jobs, be it resume, you're not sure where to look, you're not sure how to apply. Um, wicked, smart, wicked, smart, smart pack. Jeremy, have you ever seen that? Um, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts uh, commercial, the SNL skit. Everybody look up the Dunkin' Donuts SNL skit. It's just going to make your life better. Looking for something that isn't as repetitive as manufacturing. Trying to learn web dev, but it seems like it's going to be a while. Uh, Andrew, are you learning front or back end? You are not alone. Currently, we have two other folks who are working on software engineering. The good news is it's extremely in demand. So um, you might even look for a junior development position if you're comfortable enough. What language are you learning and are you learning front end or back end, Andrew? 
Um, anyone also, if anyone is looking and needs really concentrated help getting or wants really concentrated help moving from one job to another job, our four-week career change crash course, it starts on April 4th. We're going to be meeting twice a week. We are going to be working through things with people. They have access to our community forever. Um, they have access to our video course, which is extremely long and goes over literally everything. And then Ryan and I are going to be supporting all of you every single step of the way. And so that's pretty awesome. And we're very stoked to be working with folks. Um, it does help because it's kind of crazy. Like, like Andrew was saying, actually, we have some, we've been, sorry, we've been working with some people individually, uh, uh, before that, um, that have been trying to make job transitions. And it's funny how somebody can teach themselves web development, but they still, it doesn't matter if you learn this really in-demand skill, if you don't know how to actually get a job. And that's kind of crazy because, uh, it, the people who end up joining our course or asking for help are people you know, people with pretty big degrees, like there are people with a lot of paper and they just college did not teach them how to find work, which to me is just like unbelievable and extremely unjust because they, you know, it's very unjust because they paid so much money and yet they, they haven't been taught how to fish for them for themselves, which is really a shame. I need help capturing attention to get interviews and assessments. All right, Erica. Um, Erica, 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 Eric Ola. Sorry, Erica, Erica Ola. I'm I'm never sure with people. Sorry. I also to call people I also call people um the wrong genders all the time because I can never tell from the usernames. I, I just don't know. Um so you need help capturing attention to get interviews and assessments. OBS. OBS is an open source recording software. Use OBS to talk through something that you have made that you can show that you can solve a problem for the business that you are trying to get into. So something cool. So something too, I want to I really want to I really want to like I really want to drive this home to everybody that's on the live stream right now. But if you can do anything creative, if you can do, if you have an out of the box take, if you have an idea, if you have something that you think you can do that you want to do in a company for a company, for a business, for, Hey, like I have this idea about the way they do things in this business. And I think they can change it to do it like this. Do a video of you fixing that thing, or even drawing out a, a graph, draw, drawing out a, a, on a piece of paper, like taking a piece of paper and I don't know if you guys saw this, but a couple of like, it was probably four months ago. I did, uh, I productized a, a business app that was just businesses. Like it was, it was, uh, it was a business idea that I had for a business that uh, basically like Tinder, but for businesses, small businesses where they can put their businesses on and it'd be people who are like boomers or whatever. And their kids are trying to get rid of the business. Their kids don't want the business. And then people who are millennials or Gen X or Gen Z, we can, we can offer to buy those businesses for a monthly payment. And the whole thing was just to match make people who are trying to buy small businesses and people are trying to get rid of small businesses. And it's like, I did it on a piece of paper. It took me literally three minutes. I got I got VC. It's not what we're working on. So I didn't take anybody up on it, but like I got VC requests. I got, I got the video itself got 130,000 views. Um, I could have easily, and actually I never have done this cause I've had, I have a job, but like I could have submitted it for, I could have submitted it as a portfolio, as an idea to show that I have product understanding that I can say, okay, here's a problem. Let me productize. And I can make the avatars that shows who these people are. There's no rules about how you present this information. You can do it. However is effective for you. If you have a whiteboard in your house and you want to draw up a problem or a solution where you say like, Hey, you know what? We're selling powdered donuts to old people, you know, maybe we need to sell them to 14 year olds. And you just say like, here's how to change the marketing so that 14 year olds buy more powdered sugar donuts. And you could literally rewrite an ad and just like stick figures. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be effective. Um, but yeah, so sorry, that was my rant. I just feel really strongly about that. Where's your whiteboard? I know, Jeremy, I got to get that whiteboard up in here. Have you, Hannah, have you ever used JobScan? Hey, Mark, what's up? Um, Erica, sorry, Erica, my bad. <laughs> um, have you ever used JobScan? I've never used JobScan. Uh, Erica, I got laid off in January because of restructuring as workforce analyst RTA and I'm not getting interviews. Workforce analyst. Okay. Um, can't find work. I have a, a language bachelor's, but sometimes I feel my education is no use. Only factory and low paying jobs um, want me. I don't know why. Brian, have you been applying for any of the jobs that we talked about um, before? Have you looked into upscaling on any of them or maybe even um, like applying with your Chinese experience? I'm just curious. Um, don't mind me. I'm trying to figure out um, how to work these um, comments. Okay. Oh, Andrew. Okay. You're looking to do front end. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, 
Andrew, I think um, if it's taking you a long time to learn, I, I and I've I, uh, I've talked about this before, but there's a creator, um, I don't even know his name, but I know that his website is called Front End Simplified. I'm big fan of that. If you're trying to learn front end, I find that his program is really effective and people really like it. Uh, and he does teach people quickly. That's his whole, that's his whole thing is he teaches people really quickly. And so, um, I would look that up if you're, if it's slow, but honestly, it doesn't matter how shaky your first build is just build something so you can show it. Oh, Hey Jeremy, what's up? Jeremy's on LinkedIn, YouTube. Jeremy's on LinkedIn. Okay. How much is important to establish self-branding in the Salesforce field? Um, and uh, what should I do in that way? Um, that's a good question, Shubman. Hold on one second. Sorry. I am... Folks, sorry. I am... My attention is extremely divided. I am trying to figure out how to do both of these at the same time. It's no easy task. Um message TikTok, tell them to give me the RMTP so I can live stream TikTok to my computer and type out answers a little bit better. Uh, job scan searches your resume and gives you a percentage map on how it'll match to ATS. Oh, that's useful. You think uh, your resume is not convincing enough? Hmm. Are we talking business development or what? Uh, Bach 4494. Uh, no, we are talking going from the job you have now to the job that you actually want. Uh, Schubman, I think that that's a really good question. Um, how important is it to establish self branding in the Salesforce field? I think that branding in general is extremely important. Stack the screens vertically. It works. Oh, Jeremy, stack the screens vertically in TikTok or stack them vertically in the live stream. Um, how important it is to okay so sorry i keep getting distracted Schumann, uh in order to establish self-branding in the salesforce field isn't important um i would say that branding in general is important so uh the way that most people can do branding right now that's easiest is uh just make sure your linkedin looks like an ad for you as a person so whatever you're trying to do make sure that your linkedin is very clear and this is the recurring theme of everything that we're going to teach in the crash course but make sure it's easy for people to understand what you're trying to do right if they go to your profile and if they go to your linkedin profile um so one your resume and your linkedin profile need to match because that's confusing if they don't match but two if they go to your linkedin profile and your linkedin profile says that you work for the muffin man but you're trying to get into Salesforce. That's confusing, right? What you need to do is make it very obvious. Like your your line, your header line needs to be, I, you know, um, I I am a great, like I'm the world's greatest Salesforce administrator. You don't have to say it like that, but you'd be like, I'm, you know, I'm a I'm a very hardworking Salesforce, uh, Salesforce, you know, hard hardworking Salesforce administrator from wherever you're from, if you want to put that. Um, but basically, you just make it under make it easy for them to understand who you are and what you're doing. Uh, don't make them work to understand why they should give you a job. Everyone's LinkedIn says the same stuff. Yeah, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, everyone, um, if, uh, if people are going to Upgur connecting the absolute worst way. Um, yes, everyone's LinkedIn does they say the same stuff. Okay, actually, that's a good thing to talk about. Folks, if you are trying to build your network on LinkedIn, do not send people really boring, cold outreach messages. That is something that we actually are teaching in the crash course. When you're doing that, okay, one, you when you are doing cold outreach, do not do cold outreach in this way I, and i've gotten so, i get some crazy the cold outreach messages i get sometimes are just like they make me cringe um people try so hard but it's like and it's sometimes i've been tempted to write back and be like hey <laughs> this is really ineffective i'm only responding to you to tell you how to not do this because it's that bad um but i've had people ask me like they ask me super vague questions that are really annoying that i'm never going to answer um they ask and 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 i say this because i think other people like because because I talk online a lot, people message me a lot, okay? Um, and same thing to Ryan. People message him a lot too. People send cold emails, which is great. That's awesome. Um, and for most of our listeners, they send like good ones. But I'm talking, I get some real shit ones. And the shit ones are always like, um, they're always like super form um, where, hi, I'm looking for this. I think we should connect. And it's like, okay, it, it, like, you know, or they ask some nonsense question. It's like, hi, why are you passionate about what you do? Let's, I think we should connect. Um, 
yeah people always message for a job just be transparent yeah i would agree with, i would agree with that um be transparent but more than that your goal is to add value don't like I had someone, probably the best one I've gotten was somebody messaged me and said, Hey, um, I saw this article and it made me think of your podcast. Love, love the stuff, you know, lo like love the podcast, keep it up. Um, and that to me, right. Value can be anything. So if, if you know that the person is interested in a specific topic, send them something about that specific topic and then just thank them. That's a, that's, you want to build a network. That's the way to do it. Cause when that person messaged me again, you know, I responded, I was like, oh yeah. And they asked me the next time they messaged then smart, the, maybe they listened to the podcast. We talked about this, but the next time they messaged me, they asked me a question <laughs> and, and I was like, Hey, I was like, Hey, um, you know, I was like, Hey, that, uh, and I answered, I like, I wrote like two paragraphs to answer their question. Why? Cause the first time they ever interacted with me, they helped me right? They did something for me. Even if it's something small, they send me an article that they thought would be useful or interesting to me. And so when you're trying to network, just do that. Be genuinely interested in people because whoever that person was, I don't know if they were interested. Um, Schubman, of course, absolutely. I don't know if they were interested in me or not, but it doesn't matter because they did something for me. And it, it's just a natural human tendency. When someone does something for you like that, it's suddenly there's this, um, there's this trust, there's this want to help. And so when you want someone to network with you, that's how you build a network effectively. You do things for people. Um, think for them. Do things for them. Have a good why. Why am I reaching out? I loved your message. This is why. Yes. Have a good why. That is a great way to, that is a great way to say it. But yeah, when you're cold messaging people, also have the experience behind the confidence. Don't say, you know, stuff you can't do. I couldn't agree more than that, more than I do with that. Um, when you start a new job, make sure that you are open about what you don't know. Uh, when you start a job, most people are pretty understanding about you not knowing things. They don't expect you to know things. You just got the job. But if you pretend like you know things and you don't know them and you get further into the job and then they realize that you led them on and that you don't actually know what you're doing, um, that's a little different. Um, I, t you know, that's expectation setting. You do that at the beginning. You say, Hey, I'm new to this. I'm going to teach myself this, but I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know this yet, but I will. That's what you do. And you be honest and upfront. And when you give deadlines for things, you, you're realistic about what they are. I crush interviews. I, uh, I hired my first employee recently. They were evil and humble and kind. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, that's a great one. So Jeremy, if those of you listening um, elsewhere, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Mitch, our, um, the, the, the man, the mod, the myth, the legend just said a good example of how to help somebody out or a company is if you notice an error on their website um, and just say, hey, I noticed you have an error on your website. Just wanted to help you out. You could use the screen grab like clip, you know, you can use the screen clip grab feature and just grab a screenshot of it, fix it or rewrite or another one would be hey i noticed this thumbnail on your youtube channel um i noticed your, this thumbnail on your youtube channel is messed up or could be better hey i rewrote three different versions for you here they are and then send them boom um bot 449 um that would piss me off uh it does not piss me off i've had people do that for ryan and i and we're always very grateful someone let us know um um, uh, let's see. Um, Jeremy, meanwhile, want to check my website for errors. <laughs> Small businesses have a lot of errors on broken or broken links. Yeah. Broken links are a good one too. Jeremy's right. Broken link hunting. That's what we do. Um, how would you use TikTok to promote art? Is it annoying to DM or comment on lives? Hmm. Um, I think it's annoying. Okay. So I think it's annoying to self promote on things when it's not topical. Uh, if you are DMing, if you are DMing or commenting on lives about, um, I'm trying to think of something like knitting sweaters for cats and you're trying to promote your, um, like avatar, the last airbender fan art, then yeah, that would probably be pretty annoying to the people on that live stream. But if you're promoting it on, of you know, on a, on a fan stream about, about the last airbender then okay that's probably different right just make sure if you're going to do self-promotion do it in a way that's not annoying both to the person who you're self-promoting on um and i tend to say uh ask for you know like everybody says ask for forgiveness not for permission but uh it depends on if you're willing to irritate or piss off the person who you are self-promoting on 
So for instance, like uh, if you're, if you're going to be promoting on somebody's content who you regularly interact with and you don't want them to hate you, I would just ask because <laughs> most of the time people are going to say yes. Um, it's not really a big deal, but uh, you don't want to be, you don't want to lose a connection who would be friendly to you otherwise because you just didn't ask. I built my website myself. Thank God the buttons work. I need help with the SEO side. Don't we all? I was going to ask for my raise next last week and I felt and I feel confident that I'm going to get it. Jesse Munoz, that's uh, awesome. I hope you do. Not if it gets you find her suit. Legend of Korra is better than The Last Airbender. Jeremy, oh my gosh. No, don't you say that. Laugh at me on here. <laughs> Original all day. Dylan draws. Makes sense. Appreciate all the advice. Absolutely. Okay, I'm glad Bach thinks the same thing. Come on, man. Legend of Korra. Oh my gosh. Um, folks, folks, give it up for Jeremy, Mitch, our mod, our the the man, the myth, the mod. Um, hot take: The Wall Street Journal just said that twenty seven percent of job <laughs> breaking news. Hot take: The Wall Street Journal just said twenty seven percent of job postings are fake. <laughs> Reaction: I'm sorry, the that was funny. Um, hot take: The Wall Street Journal. Okay, all right, folks, we're gonna. Also, I'm going to start doing degree-free news more regularly. Holler at me if you think that that's interesting or not. Um, but we had some interesting ones, like my my conspiracy theory about Amazon paying graduates not to hire them, which definitely happened. Also, some companies are now doing entitlement surveys of college graduates when they apply. So just so you know, that's a thing. Hot take, the Wall Street <laughs> still want me to take a look at your website. <laughs> All the buttons are broken. Um, well, sorry, folks, we're having fun here over here on TikTok. Hot take the Wall Street Journal. Sorry, last time I'm going to read this like a reporter and then tell me if it's bad or not and if you want me to do degree free news or not. And maybe I'll stop or maybe I won't. Hot take the Wall Street Journal said 27% of job postings are fake. Reaction Messenger 401. Do you think that that 27% of job postings are fake? And what does fake mean? So that's what I want to know. Um, if job postings are fake, do you mean the job postings are fake as in the job doesn't exist or the job is outdated or um, the businesses put open the job so it looks like they're hiring even if they're not? Um, or do, do you mean 27% of job postings are fake like scams? Also, if you have the link to that, I would love to, I would love to um, see it. I've lost all my credibility <laughs> if you'll be honest. Entitlement surveys, what are those? Um, it's exactly, uh, Cocoa Bun, it's exactly what it sounds like in that uh, there was a professor in New Hampshire who has suggested that companies companies are having such an issue um, with, the, with the mentality of specifically millennial, millennial college graduates that they are now uh, suggesting and starting to adopt entitlement surveys, which... Uh, basically is asking it's a way to gauge whether or not you think you're better than the people that you work with because it's causing problems in the workplace. I have ADHD and I can't stand my job anymore. Mal pal. I feel yeah. Um, what do you want to do? Okay, guys, there's no such thing as recession proof jobs. Okay. Um, that's my hot take. My hot take is that you need recession proof skills. Learn something so that if they lay you off, you can go work in something else. I don't care about that. I work in real estate development, maintenance, and repairs. <laughs> oh, that's box. Sorry. Um, yeah, Malpal, what kind of um, what kind of stuff are you? What kind of jobs are you thinking about? And is there a certain amount of money you want to make? Thanks, Jeremy. Affordable housing is recession proof. That's true, but it's also very, very regulated. So that's going to be tough. That's tough in general. Anytime you're tied up with the government, it's tough. Yeah, Coco Bun. That's what I thought too. We talked about it on the podcast uh, last week. I was like, shot. I was, when I saw it, I can't say I was really surprised, but it's causing enough of an issue that that's now a thing. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's hard to, um, it's, it's pretty tough though, because if you think about college graduates, right, they, and, and, and I went to college, like I went to college before I broke out of college, I went and you're told that if you buy this thing, you will get a certain amount of money and it won't be hard for you. And then you get out of college and that's all a lie. And now it's now everybody's shocked. Um, so it's difficult to maintain a positive outlook when you've been told something that's not true. And because you've been told something that's not true, you bought something and because you were sold something that was not true when you were a child, essentially. Um, and then now you get out into the into the world and you realize 
that, oh, shoot, um, that's not true. And I don't have like, I don't have an edge in the marketplace. And oh, wait a minute, the median salary is 47k. And oh, wait, now I have to pay bills. And oh, wait, I moved to an expensive place. And now I can't pay my rent. And now I can't eat. And so yeah, it people get pretty, um people get pretty bent out of shape. And I, I, I get it. Like, I'm not, I'm not discompassionate to that. I totally understand. As much as I, as much as I can understand. Um, uh, Yvie Ross, what uh, are your thoughts on the Salesforce job outlook? Excellent question. Is it okay to be applying uh, fake it until you make it in branding or expanding network? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shubman, you should be applying to uh, as many jobs a day as you absolutely can. 100,000%. We call that volume applying. Uh, highly suggest looking at it. There, uh, We had a senior product manager for Meta. His name is Drake Porter. He's 24 years old. His total comp is somewhere in the $400,000 range. He did volume applying. Guy was applying to 50 jobs a day until he got his job. And I also use the same technique, but not as well as Drake. And so if I were you, I would highly suggest going to listen to that episode of the Degree Free Podcast. It's back a while, um, but he was, it's a crazy interview. It's super inspirational. Ryan and I talk about it all the time. Can you show, can you do a show on how to grow career from the major degree points, including no degree? Ah, that's a good work shores plan. Sure. Oh, hey, John. It was you. That's a really good idea. And uh, yeah, also anybody, if you ever have, um, if you have an idea for a podcast episode, hit, hit me with your best shot and uh, we might do it. And maybe we'll dedicate it to you too. We did one for um, a listener called Michelle recently. She asked us some questions. She asked us a pretty good question. She asked Ryan and I how we work together and don't kill each other. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, okay. I have five minutes left and I don't know. Oh. Hold on a second. I got to plug my power cord in. Um, if you're tied to the government, you'll be regulated out of being able to do things as well. I agree with that. You use two. Um, also, kids get a business degree. Ah! Let me tell people to get business degrees on my podcast. Business degree, um, people who got business degrees were the most out of touch with their salary, actually. Fun fact. Journalism and business majors. I was a journalism major, so it's not that much hate. It's only a little bit of hate. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, uh, my outlook on the Salesforce job market is good. Sorry, somebody asked me that. Um, my, my outlook on the Salesforce job market is good because CRMs are the 10th most um, in-demand hiring skill set in the entire U.S. right now. Branding is all faking it, yes. Um, Driv Artist just landed my first dev job after a boot camp. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Congratulations. What boot camp? Share it with the class. We'd love to know. Marketing is making a company look as good as possible. Yes, I can answer questions for days. Communication and clear boundaries. Damn straight, Jeremy. Uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, zero bias. Yeah, so that was my, um, yeah, that was my hot take. But yeah, so I think, um, yeah, you tend to want to, okay, let's see, where are we talking about? Where are we talking about? Where are we at? Oh yeah. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the Salesforce job outlook. Also, everybody, we just talked about this on the podcast, but the layoffs, the layoffs were serious. I mean, it was a hundred thousand people that got laid off, but they also added, we added half a million jobs, um, in the last two months. So it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Don't forget that the media tends to report things that are negative and that get clicks and you know, what gets clicks tech layoffs recession. I'm not saying that all that stuff's not happening, but they also tend to like to wind us up because that's how they make their money. Because the more we click on those ads, the more, the more we click on those headlines, the more we w look at their ads, the more money they make. Like literally that's how it works um so don't get too down on yourself don't get too discouraged if you're trying to get into tech i'm not saying that there's not shifts going on in the market there absolutely are but just keep in mind that there's still room for people there's still room for anybody that wants to get in um because the thing is you're never going to have that many people doing it um there's always less people than you think actually trying to get in um and yeah everybody's willing everybody everybody is there there's room there's room and also people are just tending to move around right now. People are moving into different careers. People are moving in. There's actually, I just read something uh, about people who are moving from tech jobs into uh, restaurant, restaurant work, hospitality work, which I found to be interesting. Thanks for sharing the live, Preeti. But yeah, folks. Um, so anything else you folks want to talk about? Any other questions you got for me? Because I would love to answer them. But yes, branding is all faking it. But yeah, highly, highly recommend going to listen to that uh, Drake Porter episode. 
big fan, big fan of that episode, big fan of the knowledge that he dropped. Code X Academy, self-paced, so you have to apply yourself and hold yourself accountable. Um, uh, Driv Artist, can you tell us, do you mind sharing with us how much it was? I would love to know. Um, I'm just curious. Anytime there's a boot camp, like I've talked about before, I don't recommend boot camps only because I don't know en enough about any of them to recommend them in good faith and put my name next to that. Uh, but I think it's something that I'm going to start investigating a little bit more because a lot of people do ask and I'd like to know, I'd like to be able to point them in the right direction. Um, so any, anyone that you had a good experience with, I'd be curious to know. Do you know anything about Salesforce Marketing Cloud? Um, Muthonic, I do not. I'm also sorry if I mispronounce your username. Um, just correct me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm an idiot and tell me how to do it. <laughs> and then I'll fix it. Um, but no, I'm, I don't know much about Salesforce Marketing Cloud. It was 4K for front end. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty, that's not bad. I self-taught back end, but it would have been another 4K. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, that's really not bad. 8K for how to, um, for, for front end and back end. That's pretty solid. How long was it? Yeah, that definitely is on the cheaper side for boot camps. Usually, I mean, the ones I see start like 10K. Uh, usually it's five figures. Can you give us advice on how to set up a good TikTok channel? Yeah, Brian, um, just start to so come up with five different things that you want to talk about. Five different topics, like uh, categories. You know how um, when you're playing 20 questions, it's like, you know, vegetable, mineral, um, animal, come up with like larger categories. So if you want to talk about money, talk about budgeting, talk about credit cards, talk about um, mortgages, talk about uh, savings and talk about banking, right? Like where, where, where to bank and things you can do at a bank. And now these are your five things. Talk about those things. So for you, depending on what your topic is, like drop whatever topic you want in the comments and I'll give you an, a couple ideas and maybe even start with less than that. Maybe start with like three just to make it not crazy. Six months for front end. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. My um, middle sister is getting out of the military right now. And she is, um, uh, my middle sister is getting out of the military and she is about to do a boot camp for front end too. What do you know about the article saying Biden is trying to eliminate degree requirements for six figure jobs? Um, I don't think that Joe Biden has anything to do with that. Um, I don't think any presidents have anything to do with that. I don't think that they have the like wherewithal or knowledge to tell companies to remove degree requirements as much as I want degree requirements removed. I tend to think that the government tends to screw things up. Like I don't see anything that they're doing well right now. I don't think that they've done anything well for a very, 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 very long time. Any of them. Um, yeah. So those are my opinions. <laughs> Don't much like politics. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if that's true. I do know a lot of states are removing degree requirements, which is great because it's very silly that that's a thing. Um, I know that, um, I think it was four years ago, there was a move, there was a move during the um, Trump administration, I believe, that they did down credential a bunch. And so if the Biden administration is trying to do that too, it's probably in addition to that. I don't know if that's for government jobs. That would be the only thing I think that's under their purview to do so. And if they're doing that, that's great. But I don't think that the government should be telling private companies how to um, structure their job postings. I don't think that's a good thing to do. I don't think that that's going to end well for anybody. <laughs> but yeah, those are my politics. Now you know. My politics are... I don't like politics. So... Oh, thanks, Triswizla. Appreciate that. Oh, thanks. Thank you. That was super. That was super nice of you. Yeah, give me, yeah, give me a smile. But yeah, folks. Thanks. That was a lot of work. Um, we're doing. Oh, sorry, sorry. I there's more comments on here. Dang, I am not doing a good job with this. How to, uh steps to follow for overcoming self doubt with communication with people. Okay, this is a good one. Um, um, yes, Jeremy. This is where we're gonna go if they ban TikTok. Those. Those jokers better not ban TikTok. I tell you what, they just don't like TikTok because they don't control it. That's my that's my hot take on TikTok. I think that that is what's going on. I think I think the last administration tried to ban it. I think this one tried to ban it, and I think they just don't like it because we're all talking to each other, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I think they're all sketchy. That's what I think. Um, is this where we're going if they ban TikTok? Yeah, we'll go to YouTube or um, LinkedIn if they ban TikTok. We're not going to Facebook slash meta slash whatever um step to follow um one step to follow from overcoming self-doubt for communication with people uh be honest 
about who you are. That's a thing. Um, the the thing I think that a lot of people struggle with self doubt, and they struggle with self doubt because they think that they have to present themselves as something they're not. Um, so I find that being honest is the best way to overcome self doubt. So just upfront, if you're if if what's making you feel like an imposter is believing that someone is going to find out that you are not what you say you are, just be what you say you are. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. I know that's, I'm not trying to be profound. I'm just saying like, if, if you're starting a new job, just say, I'm new to this. I'm new to this when in the interview, say I'm new to this. I work really hard. I study really hard. I learn very quick. I will learn anything you throw at me and mean it. Um, and then you don't have to be worried about them finding out if you're an imposter. Cause you're not, you are a person who's going to teach yourself what you need to do. You're going to figure it out. You're going to do the work. You're going to show up. And if you do that, you're not going to feel like an imposter because you're the real deal. The real deal is somebody who's willing to teach themselves, works well with the team, and is nice to work with and people people want to work with. Um, and I find that just having a good attitude goes a really long way too. Um, how to get a person. That's really nice. Um, Jeremy, that's so funny. I just messaged that. Uh, I just messaged that reporter, Rachel, I think is her name, um, about um, talking about that article on the podcast. So you have your finger on the pulse. Um, how to get a personality like you. I'm a fan of your communication and confidence. Thank you, Schubman. That's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, love from Texas. Uh, so this is the product of um, just not being super worried about what people think. I'm going to say what I want to think. I I'm going to say what I want to say. And I'm going to think what I want to think. And I think that everybody should do that. Um, but the thing about uh, the conf confidence, I think, is probably just comes from humility and what I was just talking about. Um, don't pretend to be like something you're not. And the reason I'm not uh, self-conscious or don't have a lot of self-doubt is because I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. I'm just I what you what you get here is me. This is how this is how I am. Um you know, uh, Ryan and I say it a lot on the podcast, but we joke around a lot. We just say like, hey, we're both idiots, but we just learn stuff, you know? Um, and so being, knowing that, um, like knowing your limitations, but being able to acknowledge them and not being embarrassed, you know, if someone says, hey, you don't understand this thing, I'll be like, yeah, maybe I don't. I, I don't understand everything. Um, I don't need to. I just need to understand what I need to understand. So understand um, what you need to have a grasp on. And that way, nobody can call you out for <laughs> nobody can call you out <laughs> Jeremy. <coughs> sorry and that way nobody can call you out for being something you're not because you're always sincere um that's so funny um jeremy uh our mod jeremy mitch on the other on the other uh on tiktok is saying um try Swayzilla. like this this is a good example try Swayzilla is asking me my thoughts on pci and dss i don't know what that is can you tell me what that is once you tell me, I will look it up and then I will have an opinion. That's exactly what I mean. Like, um, because I talk about such a broad depth of things and strategy, I can't know everything. I can know a lot about a little, or I can know a little about a lot and I can know a lot about a little, but between those two things, I have to just be able to learn quickly. So after this, after Triswazilla tells me what PCI and DSS are, right? Because there's acronyms. Like if you're trying to break into tech, one of the things you have to be able to do fearlessly is ask what acronyms mean. Because people, everything is an acronym and you're never going to know what they mean. So you just have to ask. And um, yeah, you just have to not be afraid of looking like an idiot. Um, even though you, you don't look like an idiot if you ask questions most of the time. Um, or if you do, it's fine because now you know the answer. Less Ryan, more Hannah, please. So Jeremy Mitch is <laughs> Jeremy Mitch, our mod, is uh, quoting a review we got for our podcast. So if you're not listening, if you're not listening <laughs> to the Degree Free podcast, please do. Uh, we got a hilarious review. Please review us. Um, and as Jeremy will tell you, give us a review. Do not give us an honest re review. Give us a dishonest review. <laughs> give us a five star review. Tell Ryan that his beard looks amazing. Tell me that I'm a genius. Like, just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. It'll make us feel good. Um, but yeah, we had a really hilarious, we had a really hilarious review that basically just said less Ryan, more Hannah. And it was funny because then uh, Ryan ended up uh, taking over all of the interviews and he's a killer interviewer by uh, my husband, Ryan. And so he started doing all of the, all of the interviews right after that. Uh. Uh, Melissa K. So many acronyms in healthcare. Oh, I know. There's so many acronyms in everything right now, Melissa. Everything is freaking acronyms. Everybody loves their acronyms. I grew up in the military too. So my dad was in the military and they love their acronyms too. Um, payment industry. Oh, payment industry and decision support industry. I don't know what those are, Trace was I'm gonna have to look them up. Actually, I'm gonna write them down. Decision. And so tomorrow on the live, I'll have a, I'll have an answer for you. 
decision support industry. How can I advertise my services on social media? Um, you can advertise your social uh, services on social media by posting regularly on social media and telling people that you can do those services. Um, so I'm not really a good one for asking about advertising. The reason is because I, Ryan and I, years ago, um, one of our first businesses was, so we've been entrepreneurs for almost 10 years. It's going on, going on almost 10 years now. Um, and so our first business was an apparel business, which I don't know if you've ever, anyone in here has ever owned an apparel business, but it's a terrible business to be in because of inventory. Um, yes, drive to Isilla, twice the same time tomorrow, 8 p.m., 8 p.m. Central. I'll have an answer for you then. Um, but yeah, and uh, it was terrible terrible because you have to keep inventory and if you don't know what you're doing which we didn't um you just lose money hand over fist and the first thing we did was back then facebook ads were kind of expensive but we were dumb and new and so we're like oh we'll just run facebook ads no never do that never run ads for things if you don't know how to use advertising that's just such a terrible terrible way to just burn through cash and we absolutely did that um and like i said this was years ago so it's funny now but at the time it was not funny at all <laughs> and uh yeah so actually we don't advertise um, we just post, just post on social media, um, and tell people what you're doing, show people and tell people what you're doing. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, so folks, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for tonight. Um, cause I have some, uh, I have some research I gotta do for Trisoyzilla, um, on, uh, D, DSI, DSS, sorry, and PCI. And then tomorrow... Thanks, Jeremy. Um, thanks so much to um, all of you for joining, for watching, for commenting, for interacting. Like I said, check out the podcast. Sorry, degreefree.co forward slash podcast. And if you want, we are still, we have still a few open seats and job scan. We have a few open seats left for our four week career change crash course. If you want to be in the crash course, check it out. It's degreefree.co forward slash career change. The link is in my bio. Feel free to go check it out. But we're working with a few people are going to help them go from the job they have to the job they actually want, teach them everything they need to know and work with them the entire way. Um, if not, you can follow us on follow us on TikTok. You can follow me on LinkedIn or add me on LinkedIn. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Check out the podcast. Like I said, super helpful. And then tomorrow at 8 p.m. we'll be back here doing this again. So thank you so much, all of you. Jeremy Mitch, our mod, thank you so much for your work. We appreciate you as always. And yeah, we will definitely be um, making change happen. Um, oh, your username is very accurate. Um, degreefree.co forward slash career change if you want to check it out. Um, the link is in my bio and you can enroll there. But yeah, so if anybody wants to join us, wants personal help, feel free to do that. But if not, tomorrow night, we are doing more career coaching live here and we're gonna do it all together work through some work through some stuff and i will have more energy tomorrow sorry today was a long day but tomorrow we're gonna do it all right guys thank you so much for hanging with me this monday um and i'll see you all tomorrow all right bye y'all thank you bye y'all